Hey guys, welcome back to another tying video with Old Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying a not so fancy CUDA tube. This is based off uh, Scott Hamilton's pattern. The only difference is this whole pattern is tied and doesn't utilize crimps. So without further ado, let's jump into the vise. First thing we're going to do is take our thread, throw our hook in the vise, take our thread, start it behind the eye of the hook, and we're going to make a really nice tight thread base all the way down to the barb and then all the way back up and back down again. Make sure this is nice and tight. We don't want it slipping or rotating. And then we could go ahead and trim that out. Then we're going to come in here with our Senyo's Fusion Fiber. We're going to take a pretty healthy clump of it. We don't want to go crazy, but if I had to guess, probably around a quarter of the thickness of a pencil, and then we're going to fold it over and cut that in half. So now we have double the fiber and now we got about half a pencil. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to fold it right around the top side of the shank of the hook. I'm just going to roll it in between my fingers. I'm going to capture all that in my hand and just kind of spin it around making sure that it covers the whole shank of that hook. Perfect. And then I'm going to wrap backwards toward the barb. I'm going to pull everything back with my other hand, sweeping everything back, making sure to grab every single fiber, and then we're going to capture that right there and tie that nice and tightly down. You can leave that big bump, it's not a big deal, and I'll show you why in a sec, but just make sure we tie this down nice and tight. We will be adding glue to this pattern, so these wraps don't have to be crazy crazy because that glue is going to help secure it. We want a nice durable fly. Kudas do have obviously some really sharp teeth. I'm just going to cover that shank up one more time just to get that silver out of there for me. I'm going to get my thread and I'm going to move it right in front of that thread bump that we created with the material. I like to take my scissors, come in here blunt at the tail, cut that nice and blunt and even and then hold my scissors horizontally and just kind of give it a little bit more depth. Kind of trim those fibers out a little bit. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Alright, next up we got the wire. This wire is around 10-11 inches. What I'm going to do is take this wire and place it tip first and tie it down right on the far side of the shank away from me. And I'm going to kind of hold it there with my fingers. I want to keep it on that far side. And then we're going to wrap all the way to the eye of the hook. Right before the eye of the hook, we're just going to leave a tiny bit of room. And then we're going to clean up those wraps and really tightly secure this down. We're going to wrap all the way back till we get to that really big thread bump that we created. I'm going to pull this wire forward and with my thumb I'm going to force it down and around. And then we're going to put the tip through the eye of the hook and pull nice and tight. While holding my thumb, I'm just going to capture it, give it a nice little tug to straighten everything out, and now I have two pieces of wire that are riding just about on the top side of the shank of the hook together, and they're folded over so it really adds some durability. With this 10 inches of wire, you could just wrap right up, and it doesn't really matter. It won't really get caught. If you have a shorter stem on your vise, you could run into a little bit of a problem. It's a little annoying. But I just use it like a regular device. And then I'm going to clean up all these wraps. I'm going to wrap a good bit right over that bend and where we tied in our material. This is all going to be covered up with glue. So this is not for durability. This is just for fisherman looks. We're just going to clean those wraps up. And then move our thread all the way to right behind the eye of the hook. So from here, I'm going to whip finish. It is a little bit tricky now because we have to whip finish with something. So I'm going to make my four. I'm going to pull that wire through my four of hand whip finishing. So I pull that through with my thumb. I make my loop. I pull it through with my thumb. And I make the loop and I pull it through with my thumb. It is a little bit tricky. It is a skill that you guys should definitely learn. It's very important to learn how to whip finish around material. Just because if you ever want to stop tying a fly mid-fly or you want to tie a different material on and you don't want to lose your spot, 
it gives you the ability to just tie off real quick and it doesn't matter so much. So then after we got those whip finishes done, that wire's tied in, it's nice and secure. Personally, I like to use epoxy rather than loon here, but for video purposes and because it still works pretty good, I'm going to use loon anyway. So I like to run two or three little beads up and down this uh, thread. I like to take the thread, hold it in my hand, and take my finger and kind of just smear that really nice and tight in those wraps, making sure to get full coverage of everywhere. Awesome. And then we can just hit that with our cure, give it a minute, let it kick off. It only takes a few seconds with this torch. All right. Awesome. This step after, if I do use Loon, I always put Hardest Hole on this part. So I'll run Hardest Hole real quick through that, let it dry for a couple seconds, and then be set. Next up, we do have our tubing. So with this tubing, I'm actually going to take my finger and just touch it just a little bit, spread it out a little bit. You don't want to fray the end. We want to keep that nice and intact. I'm just opening up tiny drop. Then we can come in here, take a lighter. I want to hold this lighter far away and just slowly melt that material. I don't want to burn it. I'm just slowly melting it just to where it gets hot. And then I'm going to take it and push down on the front right on my desk. Nice and easy. So it creates this big round, you can kind of see a hollow skirt looking thing. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. If you mess up, cut it and retry it. All you have to do is heat it up just a little bit and then press down. All right, once we got that, I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna feed it through that skirt end, and I'm just gonna put it nice over the top, and then we could take this out of our vise and set it aside for a sec. All right, next up we got our 15 mil next generation shank, and we have our Rio 50 pound micro swivel. I'm going to open up that micro shank and I'm going to put it on the side that has the actual round eye rather than that triangular piece. Just gonna pop that on there like that. Now we can come in here with our vise, make sure to adjust it and we're gonna clamp that really nice and tight and secure in our vise. We want to get a really good grip on that little piece then we can come in here and we're going to go tie this shut. So I'm going to start my thread, tie all the way to that eye. You don't have to go crazy on these wraps, but it also doesn't matter if you put a ton on there. You can put as many as you'd like. I just go up and down the shank just to cover it, make it look nicer. All right. Once we got that, we're going to come back here with our piece. I like to pull just a very little bit of tension, pinch the edge of that flexi tube and then bend it right where that flexi tube ends. So it kind of gives us just a general marker of where we need our, our wire to stop. So I'll pull out a little bit more and pinch it tight, the same length of the shank of that hook right there, because we're gonna fold it over. So I like to have a little excess, and then I'll just start tying it down. I'm pinching that flexi tubing and the wire on the inside really tight right now to hold it from going forward. So I'm going to start securing that down. I kind of want to try to tie it on the side of the shank of the hook. Perfect. And then we're going to bend it nice and tight backwards. This is a little tricky. You have to kind of hold this flexi tubing while you hold that wire backwards and secure it down. So as I wrap backwards, boom, I stop right in the middle. I just bend this up just a little bit and then I trim it right to the end of that shank if I can. And then I push that piece down and I start to secure that. Just be careful, make a couple really loose wraps over that cut piece of wire because that wire will fray your thread and you will break off almost instantly. So put a couple really soft loose wraps on that. And then you could wrap as much as you want to right here. I'm putting a good, nice, healthy little thread base, a nice big bump tapering to the front, 
and then I'm gonna make sure my threads all the way forward and now I could actually come in here let this out of my vise and now I can move this right where I want it I'm gonna actually open my jaws up to where I could kinda of grip the flexi cord and the wire but not the shank you don't want to grab the shank you want to just grab that flexi cord nice and loose so as you can see this is very malleable right here and the end of my flexi cord is right to the tip of that eye I'll pinch with my pointer and my thumb almost using my pointer and thumb as a vise and I'm going to start cinching down right where I tied over nice and tight I'm going to start from the back and work my way up to the front if you fall off the tip of that thread it's not that big of a deal but I'm just gonna slowly work my way up to that eye build that eye up and slowly build my big thread head perfect and then don't worry about putting too much as far as wraps go on this it really doesn't matter that much we're just building a nice little cylindrical head cleaning it up just a little bit it's kind of hard to build a cylindrical head with 210 thread because you feel like you're adding too much but just work at it you get better and better perfect and now we're gonna whip finish I like to do two sets of three pretty much always on all of my flies pull that nice and tight and then we could go ahead and trim that out set my bobbin off to the side so that's gonna be the done pattern the only thing we have left to do is add some glue, so I'm actually going to throw that right back where it's supposed to go. Take some loon, or like I said, you could use epoxy as well. I like to put one or two little dots or lines right up in there. Just cover a good little bit just to get some on that. And then I'm actually going to come in here and hold that micro swivel and just use my finger not even touching that thread just kind of guiding that that liquid around the shank sorry around the thread just kind of guiding my finger I'm really not wiping it off I'm just kind of helping it turn around and then just wipe that on a towel or your chair wherever the heck you want to wipe it perfect we're gonna hit it with the light and that's gonna be the actual finished fly completely I'll show you guys in one sec but this is an awesome little pattern. I do have to note, I really wouldn't fish this fly on a floating line or even a six foot sink tip head. Ideally, nine foot, 15 foot plus, as far as sinking lines go. The best line is the Royal Wolf Triangle Taper Intermediate. Uh, that is a much preferred line to fish this on. It's just an awesome Barracuda pattern. If you do wanna scale this up, this is a 1-0, and this is one, I believe one quarter, flexi tubing this actually might be one eighth but I would scale up in size uh, the wire doesn't really matter that much this flexi tubing really protects the wire it's just an all-around great flats pattern to throw I would add hardest hole to the front of this as well after hitting it with the light but super durable I mean everything's protected it just slides right back over it's easy to cast it's lightweight it's just an awesome little cuda pattern to have in your box I would highly recommend having some Alright guys, thank you for watching, and as always, we hope to see you guys out on the water.